You don't know what this is, do you? Aztec gold. The heathen gods placed upon the gold a terrible curse. Ten years we search. Every last piece we have found, save for this. Hello, Bobby. They've taken Elizabeth. Welcome aboard the Black Pearl. We must save her. Where do we start? Jack Sparrow. He talked about the Black Pearl. Make a deal with him. He could lead us to it. You forget your place. You are a blacksmith. If you spring me from this cell, I shall take you to the Black Pearl and your bonnie lass. You're a pirate. I forgot one very important thing, mate. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Not sure I deserve it. You're not facing normal pirates. <laughs> Cruel, demented, vicious pirates, to be certain. Say goodbye! Goodbye. But cruel, demented, vicious pirates who cannot be killed. The moonlight shows us for what we really are. That's interesting. We are cursed men. I hardly believe in ghost stories anymore. You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Can't you all remember Captain Jack Sparrow? Kill him. I'm gonna teach you the meaning of pain. You like pain? <laughs> Try wearing a corset. Here they come. Hello, welcome to Red Spotlight Entertainment audio commentary series. You must have your prepared copy of the selected film ready to start in your media player. To begin this viewing, please set your film at zero. So, stay tuned and enjoy the audio commentary. Hello Red Spotters, welcome to a special audio commentary. Today we are going over Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. With me I have Alexis Soto. Hey guys, let's do Pirates. And I also have Peter Mr. Mar Peter Martin, it's good to have you with us. Kyle, let's get this thing started. Alright, so opening shot. Opening shot. It's very beautiful, very misty. It sets the tone <laughs> for the movie. Uh, I, it's, uh, it's definitely one of the best... Uh, theater experiences I've had. It's one of your most memorable <laughs> memorable ones because, I mean, we should point out that of all of us, uh, this franchise has had a big impact on one Mr. Kyle Lira over here. Yes, I unabashedly love this franchise. You know, it, it's a, you know, it, it's my definition of like, of popcorn flick, popcorn fun, whatever you have. And then we, there, there you are, uh, Alexis on screen. Well, apparently I'm I'm Mr. Joshua Gibbs, so because uh, Kyle fancies himself as Captain Jack Sparrow, so as usual I have to play second fiddle. Thank you for adding the captain in there. I like how everyone ignores the pedophilia. <laughs> That's great, Peter. Look at the age of Miss Swan, and then at Commodore Norrington or whatever. <laughs> It's a big gap. Then how old? I that that uh, that always threw me off when they went when they went you know in time. I mean, she looks like she's what? She looks like twelve. Twelve, and he's and then he looks. Let's say let's let's give the film this like eighteen. That's not eighteen. I know, I know, but I'm gonna give the film some leeway. They should have hired like somebody else to play uh, Norrington in the beginning. Well, isn't yeah. this kind of like Padme and Anakin and Phantom Menace? Uh, their ages were closer. Though. Okay, you have to admit they were way closer. Right here, let's say in in the when she because is, he was nine and she was fourteen. Okay. Yeah, with this one, when she, let's say she's like seventeen when she's uh, older, older when the film takes place, that means he's like thirty-five. I don't know something like that. I guess that's not the well, worst. Well, I mean, I guess it's uh, 
another way that Disney broke ground with this film. Well, actually, if you're if you're being historically historically accurate, I guess that that kind of thing went on back then. Right, that's true. No age loss. I mean, what are the but things? It, but it did throw me. Off. I remember yeah. throwing it off me off as a kid. I was like, wait, how is he look exactly the same? Yeah. And then she's all grown up. He, he just well, fine. I mean, he I has mean, a new he wig. Ages like fine one. He has a new wig in thirteen years. <laughs> oh, that's true. It's white to make him look older. And then it also pissed me off. How did they not see the boat? It was right there. <laughs> They're so blind. Okay. Everyone's singing it. I'm just saying it. Pirates. What is it? Oh, pirates. What is it, Peter? And we should also, if we're, if we're tackling the big issues, pirates are murderers and fiends. And now they're heroes here. I wouldn't say they're heroes. I think they're portrayed as anti-heroes at best, if anything. Okay, we'll go with that. Because that's I mean, true. and then he's wearing Captain Hook's outfit. That one, that's tr- oh, that's true. Is. is that like a a wink and a nod? Okay, that's cool. Well, I never understood though, what was happening here. Was he with his father, or did they? He just happened to be on a boat no, that what, was attacked by the. Or were they looking for okay, him? The what happened was is that the pearl was was scavenging the seas to find uh to find the missing piece. Oh, that because okay. everybody knows that by this time uh Barbosa kicked uh Bootstrap Bill off the off the boat because. Uh, he he gave away his his medallion to the to uh, his, his kid. Son. I mean, uh, Bootstrap Bill kind of did that to spite the rest of the crew, because uh, the only person to come out of that curse skin free because he did return his uh, um, his medallion was Jack. Mm-hmm. All right, so unknowingly to him though. <laughs> so uh, so the only uh, so the only person you know who had the medallion still out there. Was a uh, bootstrap bill. Why did Jack return the medallion? Hold on. Okay, because wait, wait, wait. he right here, because he was that is clear as day. Pirates. <laughs> no. Okay. But here's another thing. Then what? So. So it, that it's not, so that so that boat that you saw mm-hmm. that was destroyed. Um, it was destroyed because uh, they thought that Will Turner was on. So it ship. wasn't Captain Salazar. It wasn't Captain Salazar. Salazar. <laughs> no. Um, it kind of feels like... So, oh, no, it doesn't feel like... I'm sorry, I was going to say the wrong thing. Um, this is a question. So, it's not whoever holds the medallion. It's if you steal it first, you're cursed. Yeah. It doesn't matter if someone else has it after that. They're not cursed. Yeah. They just have a cool new medallion. Yeah. They're fine. Yeah, it's the one who plucks it out. Okay. It, it, right. it has nothing to do with uh, with uh, passing it on to somebody passing on along a curse. Mm-hmm. It's whoever plucked it out. Out of the, uh, yeah. the chest. And so everybody spent their... I mean, you got to realize this. Uh, you know, in the in the official uh, audio commentary, Ted and, Ted and Terry explained that uh, the they... they <laughs> this isn't the official one? No. What no. are we doing? Anyway... Um, Ted and Terry explained it that, you know, that the gold coins were spread like everywhere, everywhere. They spent the little bit of the coin all on the world, basically. Yeah. So they had to go and search the entire globe for their pieces that they, that they, that they, that they they gave away and all that. So it, it had, it must've been a long time. And so this. Uh, during this whole tire, er, well, twelve time, years, isn't it? No, it's nine. The whole uh, time span of them looking for ten years. The, the thing is nine years. Is it nine years? Because I think uh, what happened is, and we have to keep back the Lord here. So, Davy Jones rose the Black Pearl from the depths of the ocean, gave it to Jack to captain for what thirteen years, and then he was mutinied. How many after years two. after because two? Because this, because this is the um, this is the tenth year right they're in. And then, uh, and then uh, Jack had three years as Captain of Black Pearl. Right, right. Um, because uh, Barbosa pretty much uh, kicked him off the boat. Right. Um, so, and the time span between uh, between a uh, Pearl and a uh, dead man, dead man's chest, it takes place in the time time frame of three years. 
I like how like no one gives a shit about this guy. <laughs> yeah. Bill Turner. They're just like, oh. But they think the drunk uh, blacksmith, he's like this great dude. He's going to get blown up in the Sept of Baylor. I don't even know what that means. I made a Game of Thrones reference. Okay. Oh, yeah. Don't you hate him? With a fiery passion. Don't even get me fucking started that, with that whole goddamn High Sparrow look. I like Jonathan Price, but I was not happy. Uh, seeing the flesh come off his bones in a fiery explosion of wildfire was one of the b- highlights of my year last time. So, <laughs> wow. I mean, no, I mean, it, to say it was an, a, an amazing image. So, guys, if, uh, if uh, one of us, uh, if. if if me and uh, Peter go missing, you know what happened. Well, I mean, if you were to go missing, I mean, you would kind of know because it would be an explosion, right? It's kind of hard. Oh, to my see. God. That's all I know. So I clearly they, they, they've face. been in contact for these past couple of years, right? And so yeah, Elizabeth and Will, and she's oh wanted God. him. She's wanted him to ask her, and he doesn't. He wants to, but and he can't. And he's trying to be chivalrous. Right. See? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There hold we on. go. Hold on. Here hold we on. go. Yes! My man. Dun, 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 dun. I mean... Just Badass. I'm watching Badass. this. I love, I love how deceptive this shot is. I mean, you go in, and then you think that it's a big old ship, and then all of a sudden, it's a dinky little boat. No, and then the way how he arrives on the, on the port... Yeah. It tells you, I think what this scene does great is that it pretty much tells you what Jack Sparrow is. Like, what he is and how he arrives on, on uh, the port. Yeah, I mean, everything about this sequence is great. It's a perfect introduction at that. He's a pirate. No, and it's like, one of the things about this film that should be commended, I mean, Johnny Depp got an Academy Award nomination for this performance. His first. Right. Really? Yeah. yeah, for best lead actor. Oh my god. Kind of like how Sigourney Weaver got best uh, actress for Aliens at the Oscars. She got nominated for best actress. I mean, there was a time when these films got garnered some kind of attraction, you know, with these Not people. Anymore. Not anymore. You need to be tackling no. social subjects no. to no. get nominated. No. No. Like no. Moonlight. You? Hey, Moonlight was great. It is so a I've shilling to tie up. You didn't see it. The no. Kyle actually saw it. But I mean, I, I have a feeling you know. it was better than La La La. Don't put it that way. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> I was Pirates of the Caribbean, people. Like, I love how this looks. And by the way, Johnny Depp took a, a lot of heat for this uh, by Disney. They were very much afraid. Like, what the hell is he yeah, doing? Yeah, because when they were like doing like the dailies. And they were like looking at the at the the, returns. Like the, the screenings and all that because the da- you know what dailies are right? Yes. Okay. When they were looking at the dailies and they were like, "What is Johnny Depp doing? What? He, like, what he, is this? He's a gay pirate." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were, they thought he was a gay pirate. What yeah. he was doing. Um. And now they're putting out full. Uh, they're they're putting now. You see how much times have changed. They're releasing official statements saying that they have gay gay characters. characters yeah, everyone's doing in that now. Film. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I mean, but to give some context, uh, he based, uh, Johnny based uh, Jack on two entities. He based it off Keith Richards, and he based it off of, uh, of uh, Pepe Le Pew from uh, Looney Tunes. So, Which, I mean, only Johnny Depp can think of a, a cross yeah. between those two. But whatever Johnny Depp's doing, it works for me, honestly. especially it as for this song. Ex- yeah, and Captain Jack. I mean, it pretty much spawned. Out. I, I mean, who's the main character of this movie? Captain Jack. No, it's supposed to be it's supposed Will to be Turner, Will but, and, and and Elizabeth. That's the main because, thing. But because because uh, Jack Sparrow's, you they know, follow him more though. I feel like. who Jack. Yeah, I I agree with you, and then I also agree with you. So I kind of see both both sides of it. It's supposed to, it's Will Turner's story, but however, it's it's kind of like the. What uh, Robin Williams did with the genie, you know, his his uh, his <coughs> supporting role was so huge and humongous that it really bloomed. But through. the genie never rose to the level of being uh, like yeah. Aladdin and Jasmine level. Th- Jack th- overshadows everything. Because from beginning to end, that's yeah. why I said kind of like. Okay. 
like it what's the final shot it's not of will it's of jack you know say well, matter what's the, the final shot in aladdin isn't the oh, genie it's the genie it's the, the genie, genie. <laughs> it's not, no, but that's different the genie's telling the story okay Damn. Damn. jack isn't telling the story he is the story it's a little different we have the Dead Sea Tupperware. Listen, it still works. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just love this face he gives. Like, what am I doing here? Okay, I'll just let these two idiots talk to each other and I'll just walk away. Hell we... The hell itself spat him back out. Are these two going to be in the new... Yeah, it's confirmed they that they're going to be in there. Really? Mulroy and Mortog? Well, yeah. And of course you know their name. Of course. Murtaugh and Mulroy. Yes. Of course. Or Mulroy and Murtaugh. It doesn't matter. What What of is course. it that we know the names? Of they have course. names, Peter. Of course. No. <laughs> like I said, there's no real ship that can match the intercept. Hey. I just love his whole nonchalant attitude toward everything. You could tell that when he was there, he was planning the way to steal it. Oh, yeah. That's why he was there. Can you see the piece of eight in his hair? We don't know that's a piece of eight. Until see, the you movie. know the name of that, so. What do you mean? Because oh. the third film says it like 500 times. Uh, piece of eight, piece of eight, piece of eight. Piece of eight. eight. The nine, nine pieces, pieces of, of eight. eight. Nine pieces of eight, nine pieces of eight, piece of eight. <laughs> He plays is this, a, a, an important thing into the phone. Is this the first Disney movie to mention rape? Did it's the first it? Disney film. It. I've come to rape, pillage, plunder, and yeah, he said rape, pillage my my uh. Okay, okay. We, that, that's a pirate. Okay. That's nothing. This is a Walt Disney Pictures' his first PG thirteen film in its entire history. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah, two thousand three. But I mean, it's not like the the rape was like a whole like um. Plot. It, yeah, just it, a mention. It just, it I know, but is word. this the but is this the first uh, Disney movie to mention that? I don't know. I don't know. It's These just films the, were always really violent. Yeah, oh, I remember that. And it looks beautiful who knew, too. Who knew that uh, that a theme park ride would spawn such a phenomenon? I mean, okay. I think more people know this than the ride, to be honest with you. Especially in China, because in yeah. the Chinese uh, Disney parks, they modeled their pirates after the movie. It's not so much the classic attraction. Yeah. Well, yeah, why would they give a shit about the classic attraction? Yeah. And then, and they, then made, they made me the chief. Which, it, by it, the way, that pirates ride at Shanghai? Yeah. Uh, seriously. Phenomenal, dude. Oh, you guys have been to Shanghai? No, I want to go on it. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's amazing. We've seen videos and all so that. You don't know. We don't know the power of the dark side. You just had to. Why? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it still Lent? Kyle, cut down at least 50% of puns. Oh, it's wow. A pun. It's a reference. A reference is those are special. That, that, those There's all a difference. Encom- encompassate the same cancer. I love this effect here, and then the weather changes immediately. And they use that uh, again for the Kraken. Yeah. When it hit the... When it hit the ocean, that was kind of like a call out and mm-hmm. signal to uh, to the pearl. Magic. You know what? Another thing I give credit to is Penny Rose, the guy, the the woman who did all the costuming. Oh yeah, the costumes for, are great. for the movie. And of course, you know the, the name. The yeah. name. <laughs> I just think. Uh, on a lot of levels, this this film is is so um, visually pleasing, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. I guess. Well, Gore Verbinski. Yes. Is an amazing visual director, I think. He is. And that's a big. I mean, the visuals are a big way to make this movie work. Well, it, it puts you. It, it makes it feel like. I love this adventure pirate. Right. Movie. You've never been to Singapore. Or what he was doing in Singapore. Why didn't he just take it? Oh. Well, that Cause happens. Because he knows. He knows, yeah. he knows but, the repercussions of the But legal you coin. just said he would not be cursed. You explained that. Technically, she's naked right now. Technically? Oh. But if we're, if we're talking about those times, oh. like that is basically naked. So he should be hanged. Well, they have low standards. That's why, that's why, uh, Governor, uh, Pirate. 
Governor Swan. Swan, yeah. He wanted pirate. Uh, we're gonna make it through this entire film. It's not just this film. Oh god! It's, like, <laughs> it's four movies. This no, but this can't be the Lion King. No, I'll put it that okay, way. Okay, okay. I like that little uh, little bit of uh, East India Trading Company to foreshadow what was to come later and where Jack came from. So, a lot of these movies do a lot of backwards and forwards kind of thinking, as far as their plots are concerned. Because Pirates Five is gonna go all the way back to the very beginning, even beyond yeah. that. I'm very excited for Pirates Five, right? But I'm also very worried. That's gonna be the exact same. And it's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be the first Pirates film. I just want to have a good time. I don't have I want to high ruin standards that for you. Though. Why? <laughs> because it's you like... should have high standards. <sighs> but you have heard of me. I love that. I I, I, I like how in the second one when uh, he tries to tell um, Davy Jones like. He's like, that was the deal, you know, 13, was it 13 or? You've been captain of a Black Pearl for 13 years. That was our agreement. Like, well, technically I was captain. I shouldn't have been. <laughs> I mean, I, he, I was viciously mutinated. I mean, him. look, a technicality is a big thing. Much like Star Wars, technicalities are pro- true. And I think what Peter was trying to say is that Jack's technicality was in fact accurate. So thank you, Peter, for proving my Star Wars points. No, Go I listen was, to the Rogue One audio commentary. So this was, scene is I so good right now. That. I was going to say it's funny because it goes back to how he's all in the first film he's always calling himself Captain Jack Sparrow right, right. and then he's like it doesn't matter if you if, if you didn't have the pearl he's like haven't you been going around calling yourself Captain Jack Sparrow all these uh, but Captain of what not the Black Pearl he, his, his <laughs> point was like you know, apparently you're a captain if you're calling he's yourself like, captain he's like you were a cap you're a poor captain but a captain nevertheless yeah that was what he said alright we're going okay this is I think this is like the only time he says it fully. Yeah. Because every time he keeps trying to say that, he gets interrupted. Yeah, something happens. <laughs> Which makes that moment more special. No, but again, I love this whole uh, set piece because it just shows you how inventive, or maybe just luckily clumsy Jack is at getting away from these things. It's very. It, it's Are those soldier stormtroopers? Like, <laughs> what? What? They have to be. They have to be told to shoot. <laughs> and then their shot is unbelievably terrible. <laughs> Look at. There's like at least fifteen guns right there. It's so cool. <laughs> and the score is so great. I mean, like oh, that's 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 amazing. I love the score. You know, everybody's like saying, oh, Hans Zimmer did Pirates. I mean, bitch, no. It was Klaus. Are you calling out Hans Zimmer? Yes, I am calling out. As a hack fraud? He is a hack fraud. (laughs) I defend you, Hans. Mainly because I love your name. Hans. (laughs) Hans Gruber. Makes you sound like you make the most delicious butter. Oh, I'm Kyle. (laughs) (laughs) One of the the helpful things to keep uh, in mind... Are there any like callbacks or Easter eggs uh, to the uh, classic attraction so far? Um, the only thing so far that I could note is when she's singing the the song. The, in the beginning. yeah. There's also pirates. But, yeah. Yeah. And they're in the Caribbean, so. Are they now? Dizzy now. I'm sorely tempted to accept that offer. Okay, Kyle, you need to limit your. <laughs> we're, I, we're getting to a point where we, we know can... we know this is gonna happen. <laughs> He, he lives and breathes um, pirates. No, but I... Look, it's, are, you, are you going dressed up to Pirates 5? Why did you ask him that? Because I'm, I'm Why did you interested. ask him that? Now, oh my God. Now, I ha- no, I have a point. I just... Yes or no? I have a point. Is it a yes? You're winking at me, so I assume it's a yes. Okay. This is where I think you cash in all your friendship cards with Alexis, and you make him go as dressed as Mr. Gibbs. That's true. This is the That's final true. pirates oh my God. said by the trailer. What are you if doing? If you're a real friend, you Let's would go it. as yeah, you, Jack with the mutton, and Mr. Gibbs. With the mutton with chops the mutton and all. Chops. <laughs> you see him go down to Party City, get some nice mutton chops? <laughs> you know, this scene is very beautifully shot. I just love how all the pickaxes are, you know, layered around. Axes. And just look at, look at that mustache. 
You're not getting out of this. No, nope. <laughs> Alexis. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be in town that week. That's fine. Via Skype. You can still get dressed. I'm going to be out of the country. I'm going to take... All of a sudden. No. I'm that week. I... <laughs> this is what I'm going to No, I be. swear. I'm going to be out of the country that week. Okay. I'm going to commandeer your shit. <laughs> but that means you, Peter, can go with Kyle and that you that, can be the stand-in. This is the thing. You don't have to go opening night. This, this film is going to be out for weeks. Excuse me. Uh, Kyle is going to go there opening night. He's been waiting for this I movie know. for how many years? How many years have you been waiting for Pirates 5? I did my waiting. 12 years of it. In Azkaban. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get back to this, but we need to talk about... This sequence. I love this sequence. Yep. Uh, it is a really good sequence. sequence. It reminds me of uh, The Princess Bride. Have any of you guys seen it? No. Okay, never mind. Babe. My name is Inigo Montoya. Yeah, that. Who killed my father. Prepare yeah, to die. Scene. It is a very classic swashbuckle yeah. uh, choreography adventure. adventure. It's not overly choreographed, though. Yeah. I, and, like, the way that he's, like, <clears throat> the dialogue in between is really good, too. Yeah, I mean, this is good. One of my problems, and we'll get to when we get to On Stranger Tides, but one of my problems with Pirates 4 was a lot of those things felt very much choreographed and staged. On th- I'll... On Stranger Tides is probably going to be the funnest one because I think that's where we're going to get the biggest disagreements. Which one? On Stranger Tides. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that's like your second favorite Pirates. That's my least favorite that's my Pirates least. as well as yours. So we, we obviously see it very differently. But this is the Pirates Connoisseur. I don't know. Pirates uh, Kyle Lira. Yes. Well, I mean, in general, a lot of... Like, the Pirates movies aren't that... <laughs> The Pirates movies, unfortunately, are very underrated. I think all of us, to an extent, are big fans of this franchise. Peter, Alexis, I have a question for you, though. Do you fear death? How, okay, how, we need to keep a, a catalog of this. Oh my God. How many direct quotes can we get? It's not even from this fucking movie. Aren't you? <laughs> and I okay, <laughs> they're uh, seeing that right day. now, I swear. You need to find yourself a go, mate. Is it really commentary of we're just, like, <laughs> uh, you know, doing our own, uh, what is it, dub <laughs> of, the, of the film? Or oh, perhaps the reason you practice three hours a day is because you already found one, or otherwise incapable of wooing said strumpet. See, this is, uh, like, this is I, a great way of showcasing the dialogue in this movie. movie. Great dialogue. But the, but the issue is, though, I don't think it's, I'm, I'm not impressed because we have the subtitles on, so, uh... If this had come from memory, maybe, but we do have subtitles on. But so Kyle, you know Kyle memorized know it sure. at some I point. Know, but still, <laughs> it's like, you know, riding your bike with train wheels. Not memorizing, per se, but just have watched it enough times to know the dialogue. Just, just living it. <laughs> breathing it. I mean, this is just over-the-top fun. Yeah, I love it. Fun. And the one thing Like that... that. I, I have with action films that to me like um, action films are very similar to musicals in which this the same way that films every once in a while have an action beat the same way musicals every once in a while have a, a musical beat right and my issue with musicals is when the music musical number or whatever they're doing has nothing to do with the story like there's no point the it's just there yeah and then they, they do it and I have that same issue with action films mm-hmm. Um, when it's just like um, well some some action films are basically just there to be nothing but action which I'm cool with but other films like this where they're trying to tell a story I like that it infuses you know Pirates. character development with the scenes with yeah the, the, uh, that's what makes it flow so well I like uh, mus- musical sequences with uh, in musicals they have yeah. songs and they sing and they progress you the learn plot. more about the character the story did you the feel uh, that all of the songs in La La Land were that or do you feel that somewhat unnecessary um, I don't know what you thought because I thought that they all kind of served a purpose they, somewhat I, I heard that they, they they didn't and I got really afraid but it was I didn't some of them were very you didn't like one of them you didn't like the first one, one. I I like like, the first right. one. But um, I, I never got taken out of it. I right. never felt like just doing my civic duty, sir. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I fact, never. Fun fact: what's all over Orlando Bloom is really nice, quick. Really, really. Must have been delicious. 
How about you? See, okay, this there, is, there. There's a right. That's reference. from the right. It's that thing we know, guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know the party pooper. I don't care. <laughs> when was the last time you rode Pirates of the Caribbean? Ooh, fool. Did you go during Grand Night? No. It's been years, 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 years. Yo ho, yo ho, the pirates are for me. I like this transition mm -hmm. where it showed him like burning something. Right. And then it cuts to her with the coals. Right, the, right. That's a cool transition. I don't know. I just. Something. It's also nice to know that's how they heat up beds, I guess, at that point in time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um. Because they did live near the coast and. Uh, yeah. And it gets cold. It gets cold. She got too bold right here. You just had to. <laughs> she got too bold. I know. But that will turn her. That will turn her. <laughs> that is too bold. Oh my gosh. She's like, well, what the fuck, bitch? I mean, you wanted my opinion. Now you don't want it? I mean. <laughs> She's trying to steer you in the right direction, all right? <sighs> no, but I'm saying. Come Come dear. Parlay. Parlay? Do you are you a down fan? to the depths to have a Are you a fan of the ride? Parlay. The attraction. Yeah. Oh yeah. I always liked it when I was little. It was great. That was the last ride that uh, Walt himself oversaw. I remember uh seeing the first teaser poster and it was um uh, the, it was the skeleton Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Dude, I love I that it, poster. I saw it in the Calexico Theater. Uh-huh. I was like, oh shit, Pirates. Yeah. I got excited. They're making yeah, a movie cool. about it. Yeah. I know a lot of people were laughing at Disney because this idea on paper was really. See, but as a kid, you don't know that shit. Right. So to you, right. everything is just, oh, that's, that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Later on, it's like, oh, really? Yeah. Especially after you see the film. Like Jar Jar? That's so great. <laughs> we'll get to Jar Jar in a couple movies. It's a bomb. I will say I don't like how the father's story progressed over the three films. Uh, Governor Swan. Yeah. It's why kind of it, because it's stayed in the same place. Well, this yeah, he kind of went nowhere. Mm -hmm. and he was a he was a nice fun character. No, he was a good character in, in this movie, one. but in the in the next two, he's hardly there. Especially the third one. It's yeah. just like he's they, just they literally turned the camera. He's outrun his use. Let's kill him. Age. Okay. I feel like you could have done more <laughs> with him. I love that. Like, see, to your point, if you want to talk about technicalities, Jack Sparrow is all about technicalities. Yeah. <laughs> this this the whole scene feels like an interactive ride when they're like blowing up the city. I don't well, this directly like comes from the ride. This whole uh, taking over the city part comes from uh, oh that's right from yeah Ryan, yeah they took over the city and uh in the i mean the first thing after you come out of that fog well, i remember there it's like firing they're shooting the yeah they're firing at the uh, yeah I and that, but yeah that, and is. then the recent re uh refurb in 2006 they added uh captain barbosa as the one who was yeah. leading the attack on uh on the, the city trying Ryan. to look for jack pintel and rigetti right there of course they're n come on okay the reason I'm saying this is because you're naming characters whose names are never explicitly said in the film. Yeah, uh, they've, they're they're said every now and then. It's Owen Rigetti. Yeah, Masters Pentel and Masters. Br like in, the, in, the, in, in, in the third really? movie. No, in the third movie. And okay, in the third, <laughs> like once in the third movie. Technicality is my friend. Uh, yeah, you gotta go also video. also look in the credits. Yeah, you have to read. Readings for nurse! Oh! <laughs> and girls. Whoa. This is 2017, sir. <laughs> Have you seen Beauty and the Beast? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> How dare a girl read? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things with that movie. It's like, this isn't really like a novel idea. Like, girls reading so progressive. I don't, I, we're not going back to that film. That would lead us down a rabbit hole. The Haunted Mansion, guys. Right? I mean... <laughs> Crossover opportunities. <laughs> the Disneyland Cinematic Universe. <laughs> this poor guy, he was just opening the door. That was bullshit. I know, right? I didn't need to shoot but, him. You know what? Right now, uh, Disney is developing a live-action uh, Jungle Cruise movie. 
I'll tell you. So stupid. Well, I mean, they did do Haunted Mansion after this movie with Eddie Murphy. Who directed that movie again? Actually, I don't know. Remember? Oh, they're making another one. <laughs> well, it's it's in stasis. Guillermo del Toro, whenever he gets his... Whenever, yeah. whatever he's doing stops happening. <laughs> time. He's still um, trying to get Hellboy what did 3. You guys think Supposedly... The original, uh, uh, mansion. The movie or yeah, the ride? The movie. I thought it was good fun. I thought it was nice. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it, it. Yeah. But it's nowhere near the level of pirates. No. But there was it was fun. it had its moments. Yeah. Jennifer Tilly as Madame Leota. Although it would have been really interesting to see if this was the actual Honda Mansion after the pirates had that would have been interesting crossing work. Very bad. Those, oh my god! Those, uh. They have range. Those, the, uh, yeah, the cannons. cannons. Oh, that, that's Lumiere. Oh my god. Crossover. Crossover. It's over. Hello, Bobbit. Is that your favorite line? I don't know. Because you say it quite a few times. It's just one of those things like Ziggo. Like, oh, oh god! I just, get, I just have fun. Saying We're going it. to that rabbit hole already. <laughs> but it's a beautiful wow. rabbit hole. Promise we won't hurt you. You've got something up on. And these guys are very technical as well. Like in the second film, when they found religion. <laughs> that was it's like pretending to read the Bible's a lie. Cause it, and, you, and you notice because the first shot of him was that he was reading the Bible upside yeah. down. He's like, why are you even reading that thing? You can't. It's the thought you that you get credit for trying. You don't even. You don't even know how to read. <laughs> He's like, it's the Bible. You get credit for trying. Pretending to read the Bible is a lie. <laughs> That's a mock against. <laughs> Can you say it again three times fast in the backwards? Polly, Polly, Polly? No, the way you just said it right now. Uh. One of the things that one of the things that really bogged down, I think especially the third and fourth movie, is the pacing. Uh, the pacing in this film is it's great. on its mark, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, because they're or- you, you're already introduced to the right. pirates. You're already yes. moving, honestly. Yeah, and you don't meet Davy Jones until like the 40 minute mark. I will say though, with the second film, uh, I totally understand that argument, but I just enjoy all of it. What argument about Davy Jones? It's too long. It's long, the really. Second one. Yeah, the pacing. That's that's, oh, what, that's okay. what a lot of people say. Like, there's a lot of. If you thought the second one was long, wait till you see the third movie. That's yeah, the third one. <laughs> that was like pushing three hours, right? Like, but there's a lot of problems with the third. Yeah. One. A lot of great acting moments. I'm Jack. Deception. Deception. <laughs> right. I'm calling parlay. <laughs> in that, stop. <laughs> but how did it get off the island? The dog. You know what? Going back to the other scene when they first show the the prison and the dog, mm-hmm. I love that line that Jack says. Very self-referential. Where he was like, you keep doing that forever, the dog is never going to move. Like Pirates of the Caribbean? Like the, like yeah. the uh, attraction at Disneyland. Do they still have that in the uh, Magic Kingdom version of yeah. the attraction? Okay. Which I hear is much lesser than the original it, version. It's like the it's like the sequels. It's like, it's it, the pacing is very off. Is it bigger in scope? It's bigger, thus making it a long time to get to the different uh, vignettes. Did Did you get wet? That Jack was still alive? No. No, because they left him on an island. They assumed he died. He's the legendary Captain Jack. The splash is more intense. Maybe that's the technicality. Betrayers and mutineers. You know nothing of hell. (laughs) That's interesting. Kyle, Kyle, you need to cut down. 
Captain. Severely. The copyright's gonna be on us already at this Severely. point. Severely. That's very interesting. Oh, oh my god. What, <laughs> what did I just say? What did I just say? I can't help it, mate. <laughs> No, one of the things um, that people may have already noticed is Kyle has a pretty decent, if not, I'd say pretty good Captain Jack impression. Kyle, uh, Captain, how did this arrive at? Like, did you just practice this, or did it just? As soon as I got out, I started. (laughs) As soon as I got out of the um, the screening of the the very first time, no, the first movie, I was like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Captain Jack, and and then. No, I mean, I gotta tell, I gotta tell this story. You realize my first memory of Kyle Lara huh. was in the sixth oh, grade. God. It was in the sixth grade, way okay. back when. It was Phil Deasling Elementary School. And all I remember, I was just walking. It was a really lo- lovely day. Just It was during recess, as I you do. I it's going to be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're walking. And you have, I'm taking a nice stroll. And then I, out of the corner of my eye in the distance, I see this kid with a stick as a sword. And he's... He's playing with it as if he was swinging a sword as if he were a pirate. I think, I'm not even sure if he had a hat on or something, but it was very clear to me that that was from Pirates of the Caribbean, which was at the time uh, one of the big movies. Right. So. And then what was I for sixth grade Halloween? Yes. uh, In sixth grade Halloween, I think it was the exact same year, right? Uh, You would have these these things where... uh, People would walk through the classroom to show off costumes. Yeah. Kyle had an amazing Captain Jack Sparrow costume, and he 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 delivered on the freaking impression. And people were, I mean, I'll, I'll just say I, got, I, you know, I kind of got in trouble. I kind of got in in, in trouble again. Because, Which time? Uh, when I was in the when I was in the getup and doing my whole Jack Sparrow bit, they were like, "You you got to tone it down a little bit because you're basically playing a drunk guy." Are you serious? I'm, Who I'm told serious. you that? I was serious. Oh, that's so stupid. But I mean, that's kind of Kyle's luck. He's always getting censored. Well, <laughs> some of it is for the good of mankind. Elizabeth. Like, like this. this. Okay, can we... We need to... S- <laughs> <laughs> we, this, this is a commentary, not a dubbing of Mr. Turner. <laughs> I mean, I have a... You can... That's a, that's a video idea right there. The entire Pirates film, just Kyle dubbing the entire film. That's an interesting Every character. <laughs> that could be something that he would want to do. I, don't I... I mean, he's basically already done it on his own without a camera. No, but I mean... Uh, but that's this is the thing. Yeah. She, she threatened to drop it in the water. They could have just gone down and got it in the water. Could they have? Yes. Like all the way down? No, well, they're not so- that deep. They're near land. They can't go down without moonlight, though. That's the thing, though. Okay. Is it, it really? There's that no hard moonlight to right now. To the bottom and get it. The bottom of the fucking ocean. They're not on the, the ocean. It's They're dark. Right next it's to dark. The okay, it's they could have waited till some. Oh. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Don't choke on your own aspirations, you're, you're being Peter. Ridiculous. In broad daylight, <laughs> in broad daylight, in the same area. <laughs> In the same area, Captain Jack. Don't you love Captain Barbosa's beard? To the beard. bottom of the so-called ocean. Be careful to not to choke. I an love those, uh, those uh, ch- the chicken little. Uh, I, I cameo. see. I see how you try to move on after I prove you wrong. Okay, I see it. I, I just don't I buy it. it. I mean, I see it. There's this clouds. Is the worst trade deal. <laughs> <laughs> like ever. <laughs> see, that's why we need a bigger wall. This it's whole attack. Huge. With a with a capital Y. Information concerning my daughter, please share it. We talked about black hair. See, if it weren't for Will Turner's motivations. And his like and his motives, um, we would not get the plot of the movie. Everything would just be still. He's just a fuck boy. Um. And how come he doesn't get a fancy wig? That's some BS. Because he's Who? not because he's not Will? an official. Yeah. He's a fucking blacksmith. He's not in the navy. Do you only get 
those wigs if you're in yeah, the military. Yeah, well, I'm, if you're in some sort of military or government position, you right. got a wig. They should bring those back. I agree. Those look like fun. <laughs> you just want them back because it looks like fun. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine a bunch of, like, uh, more hardened veterans with, like, tattoos? And then Wearing they, the wigs? They have the, the wigs. That'd be pretty badass. That'd be badass. What are you talking about? That'd be cool. Captain Barbosa and his crew of miscreants. Kyle. <laughs> I'm about to cut off your lips. Can we just comment on what's happening instead of, like, reenacting the damn thing? I mean, I people can't are watching it. this. Uh, I, I, I absolutely 100% believe Okay, so here, here's a relevant thing. So this scene. What? The, aren't we just seeing this, the exact same thing in the trailer for Dead Man Tell No Tales? Yes, with, we are. With Jack yeah. with and Jack Henry. And the new kid. Henry Turner, who <laughs> is like, his I son. He's like, your father. He was right. a liar. <laughs> and he... And again, he knew the guy's father, yes. and he's a fire. I wonder if they're going to be self-aware with it, where it's like, yeah, we're just doing the same thing again. I really hope they're not, though. Ugh. I really hope I mean, this not. exact same scene we've seen in the trailer already. Basically. I'm sorry, but you're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. Like, where are your pants? Like, it's, it's, it's basically... I wonder if they use leverage to get him out. <laughs> uh, leverage, half barrel hinges. <laughs> I like his double uh, goatee. Right. Although the the braids. I wonder how that must feel. You know, there's a reason why he has a bunch of beads and all that stuff in his hair. Oh, I'm sure there is. Because because <laughs> uh, when he would when Johnny would go and visit uh, when Keith and Johnny would hang out. Uh, Keith would always have some sort of weird trinket in his hair and he was like where'd you get this from and then uh, Keith would be like oh I got it in Bermuda or something like that you know just and uh, and that's kind of what inspired him getting all the all the all the little trinkets in his hair I gotta say though, this this film has aged remarkably well. It still looks pretty great. Yeah. Two thousand three, it's on Blu-ray quality. Two thousand three isn't that. Uh, well, I mean, co- compare how this looks to Dead Man to, to uh, Dead Man's Chest, and that three years apart. I'll be honest. This is before not, HD. Are you talking about like the Blu-ray quality? No, I think the way it was shot in terms of uh, okay. CG. Not CG. I mean the <sighs> cinematography. I, I think some of the CG still stands up today in this movie. Absolutely. Or maybe like when they're like my one of my favorite shots of this movie is when they're okay. What's this? Is this how is that possible? Is this possible or not? Because if it is, it's, it'd be so cool. How is it possible? But the thing is, though, how do you get the boat underneath the water? Because it would float up if you try to put it in that way. I don't. That's why they're holding it down. But, but it would just pull them up. <laughs> that's uh, possible. Are you Kyle Lira? You're saying that's. My issue is how do they get the boat down there? That's my issue. How do, they, how do they even see where they're going? Well, they don't. They're just walking in a general direction. Um, but anyway. Oh, wait, I, love, I love when he says this. Like, we're taking over the ship, and then he's like, Avast! Stay calm. We're taking over the ship. <laughs> just so fucking stupid. What you say? Um, what I, what I was gonna say was that one of my favorite sequences of this uh, was the moonlight walk, when they're under the when they're all in their skeleton cursed yeah, form, and then they yeah. and then they're walking under the boat and they're gonna go sneak into the other crew. That was yeah, cool. that's one of my favorite sequences, and the CG looked amazing. Oh, by the this is Lieutenant Groves, by the way, uh, the other character. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Just saying, he can now, I like qu- pride yourself. And knowing the name of Excuse. Do you pride yourself character. in being well, insufferable? Well, I mean, it's not ex- no, obscure. He's in the other movies. He, that is obscure. If you were to walk up to someone and say, oh, you saw Pirates, right? Do you remember... Uh, Lieutenant Groves. I already forgot his name. You said it. Do you remember Lieutenant Groves? He was in all three films. I like that. Look at it. That's uh, Gillette. He was also in the no, first film. He, I feel like you're making names. He up basically now. stole a ship to distract them from stealing another no, ship. No, this is ingenious. It also just shows how much of a tactician Kyle, I mean Kyle, Jack can be. I just, oh I, God, they're one and the same. What are you talking about? I. Although it does make me question that captains, there's two people. You took your entire crew, 
onto the other ship? That seems a little weird. <sighs> Literally, every single person you said, we're all going to this ship. No one's going to stay and watch this ship. And again, that shot, that aim, though. <laughs> that aim. Although, they do get a bit of a pass on, like, Stormtroopers, because those guns are old guns and the right. accuracy was off. Stormtroopers, those are future guns, or space guns, at, at least. Look at that. They're gonna, they were gonna blow, uh, they're gonna blow up the ship, right? Yeah. See? And then... They couldn't turn. Nope. He is the greatest pirate. What does he say? That's gonna be the best pirate I've ever seen. So it would seem. That is, I do like that. Yeah. That's funny. Like that shot. Gorgeous. He pulled it off. I mean, that's why he's such a great pirate. Doesn't he cut off the flags or something? What flags? The English flags. Maybe. I'm not sure. Who is his mother, though? We need a pirate spinoff. Those are those are British Columbia. We need to find out who Will's mother is. Okay. After we get Finding Coral, then we'll get that. Okay. Disney. Finding Miss Turner. Get finding Miss Turner. Finding Miss Turner. I also like Finding Hank or Finding Marlin. Can we do a Finding Mr. Ray? I kind of feel like that's left unexplored. Oh, seaweed is cool. Seaweed <laughs> is fun. <laughs> or maybe Finding Nemo. But this oh. time it's more of like an existential crisis. He's finding himself. Like Finding Dory was. Well, she literally still had to, like, find something. From here. You know? She had to make a journey to go and find. This one, it's, it's, there's no journey. Hey, it's just finding. I have a stuff. question, but from there on out, uh-huh. will everything change? Oh, my everything God. Changes. Which, a reminder, you can watch Finding Dory on Netflix. It's now streaming. But Don't why? tell your friends. <laughs> there's better things to do on Netflix. Like Arrested like cupcake, Development. Cupcake Wars. <laughs> Cup, come on. <laughs> that, okay. That. As long as you're hanging there, just pay attention. That's, that's taking it too far. Okay, cu- Cupcake Wars? That's a great show. <laughs> Again, with his, his bullshit reasoning. Um, but he, he sells it, though. I mean, this is one of the true... Per- like, <laughs> I love that. I can't bring the ship into Tartuga. I'll buy my onesie, savvy? One of the rare things you see is an actor getting to invent the character. And yeah. I, I'm i not even sure if this is... I mean, Gore did great, and then Ted and Terry did a wonderful writing, but who gets more credit for creating the character Jack Sparrow? Johnny, Johnny Depp? Depp. It's Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp himself. And, like, this movie just reaffirms that that Academy Award nomination was warranted. <clears throat> I'm surprised you didn't lose your shit when they said Tortuga. They're in the place. The I place. How hard it must have been to like get this. Get this to work. Yeah. You have to tell all of them all the different things they're doing. And I mean, this is another callback to the ride. I see. It's like it, literally the ride. If you look in the documentary, uh, in the little uh, documentaries that they come out with on the DVDs, yeah. you can see them directing the the extras like. Just go nuts. Just, uh, just you're doing this, you're doing that, and this group is doing that. Go. Yeah. And then they improv the rest. So, and it, I like how she's dressed as the redhead Cause from the Scarlet. ride. Oh, that because it was... Jesus out. Right. That's an interesting name. Where have I heard that before? Oh, my God. Giselle? No. Oh, no. What happened to, um... Gibbs? Mr. Gibbs. I don't know. We have them in the studio right here, ladies and gentlemen. Exclusive. Look at it. It's really easy. All you need is a couple of mutton chops and sort of like a vest, sort of like a Han Solo vest, sort of. A vest, a button-up shirt, which you already have. You're good. A white button-up shirt. White button-up shirt, your vest. You could easily make a vest just to get like a... A vest is... By the way, it was really nice getting to film with those pigs. They were very peaceful. I, I say, I, all I'm saying is Alexis. If you value your friendship, Alexis Moreno, uh, I think no, she no, can, Alexis, she's hearing us. So, She'll so, hear this. 
Oh, alleged, now you say. Because when you address us, you say great. boy Alexis or girl Alexis. Okay. Girl Alexis. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, my God. Assuming gender is now, are we? I know. I shouldn't have assumed. Um, if, <laughs> but you if did. You val- if you value your friendship with Kyle, you will go Going with Mr. The Gibbs. Her. Right. <laughs> What'd you say? He said He said the lines of the film. Be Again. Take. Yes. How many times? Look, I love that. I love this interaction between the two. Although, what probably would be great about watching the next Pirates films with you is that it's going to be probably the only time ever I'd be able to watch a Pirates film with you where you didn't say the exact lines that were coming out. It'd be the first and only time. Are you sure? Pirates about- Five, unless you have oh. like your telepathic. Yeah, I'm talking about Pirates Five. No. Unless you have like you're so entwined with Jack Sparrow. You- you just know what they're gonna have, what's gonna be said, but okay, here we he go. Here's my spiritual doppelganger. There we go. <laughs> you know, I just knowing from the the chemistry between uh between uh Kevin R. McNally and uh, Johnny Depp, you could tell that they've known each other. For quite well, yeah, a while. Th- that's why this scene works, but it's also kind of a surprise if you're imagining yourself in 2003. Oh, these two are friends. Yeah. I had no idea these two were. Wasn't he in the Navy? And then what happened in this year? Clearly, there's a lot of history there. Yeah. And you know what? They needed a female, and they did what any good studio would do. Oh, need. my God. They got Zoe So bad. Because if you need you a female leading role, you go Zoe held up every time. Hold on, guys. My you fa- know what? One of my favorite film monologues of all time okay, is okay. coming up. What, but Batgirl? Let me just say, no, not Batgirl. Pirates female spinoff. We follow Zoe Saldana's character and her own female crew like Ghostbusters. Anna Maria. Get it done, Sony. That was such a good character. Why did they just let her go? They should have brought her I back. Think, you know what? I think she, I think you know what? came okay. out. She didn't. She said it was like a terrible experience. Yes. Really? Yeah. 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 Why? I don't know. I don't think she ever explicitly said, but um, she probably like bureaucratic bullshit. I don't know. Um. Also, what? Also, the um the thing that was done. It was kind of like a I am your father sequence, where they inserted a fake page into the into the scripts. Right. At the end of the movie, it was supposed to. At the end of Dead Man's Chest, it was supposed to be Anna Maria. That was what they wrote oh. at, at, at the end of writing it. But then. Um, but then uh, Jeffrey was on set, and he walked down. And so when you saw all the people, uh, when you saw uh, when you saw Orlando Bloom, you saw Keira Knightley, and all the rest, when they were like, "Whoa, this is this is this is what's supposed to happen." Yeah. So no, I mean th- that's one of the true things. Yeah, I think so, cause yeah. Zoe Saldana was great. Yeah. And I don't know. Well, I well, guess I mean she didn't want to come back. So. Hold on, guys. Yeah. Hold on, guys. My one of my favorite film monologues of all time. Um, okay. Of many. I, I mean, know. in this movie, no, but this isn't my top three. Okay, but the <laughs> this isn't is, my top three. You literally saw it last night. Um, You're fine if we talk over it. Shh, this no, is an audio no. commentary. Yes, and okay, look, I I really have to say that Captain Barbosa is a. Yeah, I, I love him. I He's love great. that Jeffrey character. Rush did a hell of a job. Okay, I know this is kind of hard, but of all of the pirates' villains, who would you be the best one? Barbosa or Davy yeah, Jones? Barbosa. I like Barbosa. But I think he's a villain in this movie. And in the following movies, okay. he's. In... Okay. This is very good information to answer your question. Information that we already know. I know. I understand all this. Um. I I love how it's like m- mythical. Everything is very mythical. Right. I like that as well. Like it's it's sea monsters, curses, and the irony of that is that in the fifth movie is going to be a woman of science. Remember in in, in the what? clip in the trailer, the main female. I believe in science. I'm a woman of science. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my god. She's Escalante. <laughs> no, there. I believe in God. I believe in science. It's where the oh my god. Stop with that movie. It's a it's a disgrace to nature. Okay. What? You don't like? Oh, okay. No. No. Don't oh, be, you know uh, what? Your credibility I, no. has been decreased. Not, you know please. what? There's a lot. There's a lot of points where I could have lost respect for you. <laughs> but that was it. That, that was it. <laughs> okay, look. It was. It was all right. I don't get the big deal. I Why is that movie so great? Nacho Libre. 
Really? Get yes. that stupid corn out of my face. That entertains you. It's a funny oh. film. Okay. Okay, but what are you going to say? Okay, in that trailer for <laughs> Pirates, Dead Man Tell No Tales, the main female that's with Jack and with uh, Will's son on the boat, and she's like, I don't believe in ghosts. Uh, I'm a woman of science. And then behind them, there are literal pirates, ghosts going after them. Now, that's probably something I'll complain about, <laughs> like how stupid <laughs> that is. But um, what was I going to say? Shoot, I forgot. Never mind. Oh. No, wait, I forgot again. Ruined it. Believe in science. I like Davy Jones, but he he um ah uh, he he turns out to just be like oh I found love and then it sucked. I kind of like that Barbosa is just like. He's just a badass pirate, yeah. you know? That's just his thing. He's just trying to fix the curse. So it's more traditional change. pirate stuff. Right. Which I, I, I really like. And then also I feel like they didn't wrap up the whole Calypso Davy Jones thing properly. No. So they can bleed. When I mean, cause look, okay, look, 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 this was look the okay. The sequence that got me as a kid. Okay. I the, loved it. Oh really? Yeah. This to me, I was like, best start believing in ghost stories. Like, You're in one. Yeah. In the daylight, right? Uh-huh. They have their skin. They can die. No, they can't die. They can't. Are you sure? Cause remember later on in the movie, somebody like they have a grenade and they're not in the moonlight and they get exploded. In. Yeah, but I mean. There, I'm pretty sure there's limits to the uh, the curse, the curse, like getting shot or anything yeah. like that, stabbed. Oh you yeah, won't that's die. yeah. Certain like that, you won't die. You won't die of hunger or anything like that. But if I literally burn you to ash, you're not gonna come back from that. Yeah, like it's the night is dark and full of tears. Unless you're Majin Buu. What? I know. It's, I'm trying to be Kyle here and reference something. Didn't work out. Which is which means you shouldn't reference things at all. That monkey always scared me. Uh, Jack? Yeah. Don't now you're doing it too. <laughs> I know. No, I only do it with Captain Barbosa because I love his. Uh, right. Kyle. <laughs> what? Do you even realize that you're you're mouthing it? Yeah. Like, saying it. Okay. Like look at his eyes. He's just yeah. a creepy dude. I love. He has it. jaundice. Does he? <laughs> no. Because oh. because his. Eyes are yellow. Not believing in ghost stories this turn. Turn on you on. I love, love this. See how he just drinks yeah. it. Ah ha ha ha! And then they all laugh. What a waste of wine. I know. Such bullshit. I'm surprised Alexis didn't I love say this that. Laugh. He's the our resident alcoholic. What are you looking at? Back to work. It's so funny how apparently I'm the resident alcoholic and yet Kyle can never hold his liquor. <laughs> and he drinks more than I do. Well, we don't know. There's Marty. <laughs> okay, that's... Like, come on. Is that really an obscure character? Well, they never really mention his name. I think they do. I, I, I think I do remember them saying it maybe once. See, cotton. cotton. Cotton, I'll give you, because they say cotton many times. But still. And plus, he has a parrot. Yeah, he has a parrot. He's very noticeable. Cotton's parrot. David Bailey. Are these pirates back for the fifth one? It's it's interesting. So I know that Marty, we saw him in the trailer. Yeah, I saw Marty. And you said Mulroy and Murtaugh are going to be in there. Not Cotton? Has it, or is that going to be a cameo? Has it been confirmed? Because it'd be kind of weird if they didn't get Cotton back. Did the actor in the die? the fourth one. No. Pintar and Getty, what happened to them? In the, what is it called? In the fourth one, I distinctly remember when at the end when he looks in the bottle. Mm-hmm. The monkey and the parrot are both there. Gamora, yeah. what are you doing here? It's Zoe Saldana. It's your girl, Peter. 
You put her in everything, and then you're just guaranteed big bucks. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> put her in anything. Yeah. Soon to be seen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. And that, that <laughs> movie is gonna make big gangbusters. Bucks. All right. She, Avatar, is the most successful film of all time. Right. And I place that solely on Zoe Saldana. Right. So when are we gonna get our Gamora trilogy? Not soon enough. We've been trying to get that. You know, China. Marvel. Hello. We want a Gamora trilogy. Maybe it can compete with the Batgirl film. It'll be better. I, It'll be better than the Batgirl film. Well, I wouldn't go that far. If it even gets made. It'll get made. Look. He knows. He knows. What is he, I like how there's like, what is this? He's just looking like? at Like, what the fuck? Wait, what were you saying before? What? I, I forgot. Before we were talking about <laughs> Zoe Saldana. About, oh, yeah. Uh, Pinton and Rigetti. They're not going to be in the fifth one? We don't know officially for sure. Because I mean, because Peter was right in the fourth movie, you see the parrot and you see the monkey in the yeah. in the ship. So I'd want to see them back at least for a cameo. Because Scrum is back from the fourth yeah. movie. Stephen McFry. He, he was, was funny. Yeah. Uh, he was he was a bright spot. In yeah. That film. He fit. So I'm happy he's back. And he has he has just his face has that pirate look. Too. Yeah. Like you can imagine him in the ride. So is this gonna be the, the final movie, the fifth one? That's what the trailer said. But then it's also funny because I guess the film is officially Dead Men Tell No Tales. Um, I think it's so funny in every single of the trailer, they never flash the title of the film. At but the end, for for Pirates it, Five, uh -huh. for it ev just every shows, time they just show the skull. No, but it shows. Uh, but it shows. Uh, as of lately, they've been showing a lot of uh, Salazar saying. Uh, Dead Man Tell No Tales. But that's not the same thing as flashing the title. You're getting a lot of Javier Bardem. He looks great, though. Yeah, I think I think he does look great. I, 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 I just... I was not impressed with Ian McShane. No, I wasn't at all. So I'm hoping that'll make up for it. I know you like him, Kyle. I just... I don't... I was really disappointed with that. There I was. Because it's Ian McShane. It's... Okay, so this right here, uh, they're, gonna, they're getting ready for... To basically kill her, right? No, they're not prick her finger. Yeah, but you think they get, what? You think their plans would just keep her after? I don't know. Have a bride. I don't think they cared. They, I don't think they really thought. They're pirates. They don't think past the step in front of them. Unless you're Jack and he plans like ten steps ahead. Does he though? Or does he just make it make? I think that's one of the big questions of the whole franchise. Either does he plan ahead or does he just make it up as he goes along? What do you think? What do you think, Peter? I think you're gonna find out in Pirates Five. He has a magic amulet, <laughs> magic amulet that gives him good luck. And when he takes Dead it, Dead Man's No Tales. Roll credits. That's the sixth movie. Oh, the fifth. Yeah. No, that'll be the sixth movie. Oh, in which you your your movie, yeah. Amulet. And when he takes off said amulet, he becomes a really old man. Whoa, this is not a throne of games. Oh, he's unsure of what he wants. And one of the great things that they do. Well, go ahead, Peter. So right there, they right. said not much was known about him. Right. So he wasn't the legendary Captain Jack Sparrow before. Um, he wasn't that before the whole curse thing with Barbosa. Right. Of course so not. So yeah. you can't be telling tales before that. I guess that's my point. Mm -hmm. Doesn't doesn't mean uh, there still can't be a beef between uh, Javier Bardem and. Uh, no, I get that. And Jack. <laughs> like this was completely improv. That obviously wasn't day one of filming. Then that was probably one of the yeah. last few days. Like that, he obviously got insanely lucky being stranded on that island. Like he didn't plan to get stranded on the island where he could get rescued. Okay, well, okay, here's one of the things. Kind of a misconception. The, the tale goes that Gibbs is saying is that Jack got off by rusting together a couple of sea turtles with his back hair. 
that's not how they got off the island. No, okay. I'm that gonna be, was, I'm that be was just a, with you. that was a tall tale. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you guys some uh, some uh, pirates legends of BS. No, but here. even in the movie they in say the, in the game. All right. Oh in my the pirates god! Of the Caribbean oh my god! Video game. No, no, no. Here no. you go. Here you go. No. It was really a passing ship, and also according history historically they called sailors uh, sea turtles. So technically, sea turtles. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's implied that it was a... Uh, what was it? It was like a trading stop, that island? Well, yeah. it'll be a scene later on where we see Elizabeth and Jack on the island, and then he tells her how he got off, basically. I and that was in plan. If he, if he, that, and that had actually been a real island, he would be dead. Yeah. That's I mean, you gotta have treasure in your pirate movie. I just love how it's just a very much... Uh, Hollywood version of pirates. Yep, you like could mountains of gold. Like it just feels like a couple hundred years, a few hundred years after this. You know, the Goonies are searching for shit down there. But this is pretty much uh, this is pretty much uh, their private bank. But they have no reason to spend it yet. No, that's why they're saving all that shit, so that when. But see, that's the thing. The second the curse would be undone, all of them would be like. All right, I'm taking it for myself. Yeah. And then they would have killed each other all in the end anyway. Stop crying. That's a piece of eight. One of the nine pieces of eight. Was it nine or was it ten? I think they said I'm just nine. making a joke. Oh, it was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Good joke, good joke. Look at the crowd just walking around. That's, oh, a, very, no. that's a ride reference. I had no idea there was a pirate's code before this film. I also love how this scene really. Uh, is there actually a pirate's code? Yeah. Oh. Uh, apparently, yeah. I love how they use this scene, like how Jack right now is talking about how Jack is saying, "Yeah, you're kind of a pirate, dude." But he's not that kind of pirate. <laughs> That's what Fucking you hear. Yeah. I like this one. Not all treasures and sparkles, whatever the heck he says. All that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars breaks the like, Yeah, uh, copywriters, if you're listening, go ahead and strike us down. Yeah. At this is. point. <laughs> I will strike you down with all your hatred. <laughs> Do you need alcohol? I... <laughs> you see how she has like perfectly plucked eyebrows and it's Kira Knightley but the thing is they go to very good lengths to make everyone else look like grimy in the time period because mm -hmm. they're like, pirates and it looks like she just got off a photo shoot with Vogue well she's the governor's daughter they, they didn't also, have you know messing with your eyebrows also and all that another, shit back then also yes they did no yes they did they did not have that Yes, they did. No. Um, but no, anyway, she was 18 when she filmed this. Keira Knightley? Mm-hmm. So that means... This is Keira... 18. 18, when they filmed it. When it came out, she was probably like 20. Yes. <laughs> Can't stop me. Can't stop me. Hey, 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 can't stop me. I've never seen someone's love of something make me, like, despise that thing before. Are you sure? Me. Kyle does a pretty good job all the time. That's what I'm saying. Oh, he's, he's in general. Impossible. Yeah. I never, I never knew I could despise someone else's happiness. What about Ms. Moreno? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's different. <laughs> She constantly tests you. She tests me. I don't like it. <laughs> she don't make no sense. Oh, in case she's hearing this, um, I don't know. You're a hack fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
This is very anticlimactic. They should have just stabbed her in the eye. Really? Why do you look at me like that? It's a Disney movie. Okay. This is not Game of Thrones. I mean, so did they all have to do... Wait, okay. Hold on. They all did their own blood. Did they all do their own blood? Before. Yeah. But how did they know which piece belonged to which person? It don't matter. Whatever, whatever, Everybody, number, whatever number was out there. This is the problem. Everyone the on the crew. The technicalities. They and they knew the count of the of the of the gold. And they knew who was missing. Most importantly. It but said, then how come uh, if they Jack said, was a part of all of this? How come he didn't get cursed? Because he returned his, uh, he, he returned his gold. No, he didn't return it. He uh, he never plucked from the from the from the chest. He never took from the chest. Because he knew, because he knew the the myth. My oh, I I thought it, it wasn't because he didn't know the myth. It's just because they mutinied him before he was able to. No, they they mutinied because he was trying to warn him about. Jack was trying to warn the um, the crew about what was going on about the about the cursed gold but then uh, Barbosa was like saying you know what I'm tired of you like like uh, trying to keep the gold for yourself you know, yeah like, kind of like that so they pretty much kicked him and are you sure I'm oh, sorry I could have I don't know <laughs> no she had the medallion the boogly is it girl the boogly will find the truth. <laughs> Kira Nile. She's great. How come she isn't in stuff recently? What's the last thing she was in? Who? Uh, Kira Nile. Cl- uh, Collateral Beauty. Oh. Uh. Imitation Game. Mm. Begin Again. Mm. Okay. She was also in the Love Actually. Uh, Kira Nile got an Academy Award nomination for Imitation Game, so. Uh, actually, that was a good film. That's true. I'll take that back. It's been all of blood. Just in case. Really? But they know we... Well, they're stupid. Yeah, that's true. And but they're Barbosa, desperate. Barbosa isn't. Zemedalian! Zemedalian! <laughs> it's a girl! Go get the circus! It's a girl! <laughs> <laughs> She is. She may be the one. <laughs> the one to break the curse. The one to break the curse. <laughs> it's perfect. You can't. You can't argue it. Peter. Oh my god. Peter. She's the girl. I get. You got Kyle reference points. <laughs> <laughs> by the. I don't know. I should be proud of that. By the way, I just want to take this time to call out comicbook.com for that misleading headline. Fuck you. What misleading headline? Oh, did they get you? What, is, what does it say? Completely oh, misleading yeah, headline. It's yeah, it's getting say, canceled. Could this be the last season? Fuck you, that's not even what the quote was. <laughs> Seriously, misconstruing. Do you see this goddamn media bias going on here? Over, Fuck you. Fake news. Fake news. Soon, yeah, yeah, but fuck comicbook.com. It's oh gonna my say god. That. Sorry, we got a fanboy over here. Nerd. Nerd. Keep to the code. <clears throat> so who becomes the uh, captain now? He does. Gibbs? Uh huh. Because he yeah. was first mate. Because the first mate is in the succession. <laughs> Kyle. Oh As I was saying, comicbook.com, what a completely irrational and biased headline. Could it be canceled? 
Fuck you, whoever wrote that article. It Re- so it, it's misconstruing. Guys, guys, this is a pirate's commentary, not an agent's of shield. Well, I mean, excuse me if you weren't quoting the goddamn thing every now and then. At least okay. it was relevant to the topic. Let's make connections. Agents of Shield. You watch Agents of Shield. You pirate Agents of Shield. Pirates. I don't pirate it. Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't. don't I don't pirate, pirate it. No, really. No. I saw that file. Well, that was him, and he purchased them off iTunes. I so per- he says. I purchased them, and then I. I, I think we need a into special intel committee. Okay. To, to truly know what is going on. Emails. You are fake news. This is like the first time they've seen each other in like an hour. Or of the film, anyway. But I love the believer. Oh, they're in love. <laughs> So, I, is she, does she even come out? Maybe she's dead in the new film. Do you guys ever think of that? Who? Keira Knightley. She's set to make an appearance. Is she? Yeah. No, it hasn't been confirmed. Really? It's been, it, no. It's been reported that remember? she was on set or something. She was on set, oh. but they could have showed her death. Oh, shit. Yeah, that usually goes that way. <laughs> Why would she be dead, though? Because it's Disney. And once you become a mother or a father, you need to die. Well, technically, that the, is, fa- technically that the father the already way. died. Technically, he did, yes. They did tear out his heart. I wonder if his heart comes into play in this. Well, he looks a bit tentacly in the <laughs> clip. There's like barnacles all over him. Now, did that happen because of age like time as time passes that just naturally happens or is it because he's not doing what he's supposed to do that could be an interesting factor because I from from what I remember I I thought the only reason um, Bill Nighy or Davy Jones turned on tentacly he corrupted he, his purpose yes he corrupted his purpose so it corrupted him um, but I don't know we'll see Go. What if she is the one? This is called negotiations right here. <laughs> None of this trade federation crap. This is like me and Kyle debating what to discuss in the podcast. My shit. That is so ridiculous. No, so this is how Kyle and I negotiate pretty much. And then he eats his apple. Like that's some bullshit, right? And there. you know what's so you know what's so great uh-huh. is that he's like purposefully eating the apple because he knows he knows he can't he, enjoy he can't. the apple. Yeah, so that's why he's like. Because right when he says that, that's when he eats it. <laughs> he's just, he's like, piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, would, I love how he hands them. He's like, you want some? <laughs> Them. And then right here, he tries to renegotiate. He's like, shit. <laughs> Why does he renegotiate? Right here. He's like, I had a second thought. Why? Because it, they, they, uh, he realizes that Will is on that boat. Uh... He knows that they, they can get him, and then he's lost all of his leverage. Because they have Will. Will is his only leverage. So... Didn't work out so well the first time, now did it, Barbosa? And then he just throws away the apple, all pissed off. (laughs) And they have zero upkeep to their sails. It's a magical boat. What happened to your hair? I don't know. What happened to your face? (laughs) You walked that into that one. No, I did that on purpose. Just to see how. Sure you did, sure you did. Winning, winning. Winning. Fake news, winning. Fake news. I? I, it be me, is always. So, what are shoals? They're like, uh. 
They're like a, a passage in water over uh, currents. How are they even established or created? By currents. Really? You want a whole lesson right now? I you want a whole marine lesson? Yeah. Sure. You Maybe have... become a marine biologist? That takes 12 years of school. All right. Do you want to start it right now? Because it's... Not a good term. <clears throat> the monkey. And that was a, this is another thing that I felt the fourth one was very much missing. Uh, the sea, ships. That ship that's battles. a big thing. What happened there? Like most of it is on land, and it's kind of lame. Or at night. Or at night. Like another trailer we saw recently. Uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming. I thought you meant uh, Justice League. <laughs> And I love how they improvise with shooting just like forks and stuff. Yeah. Kind of... I am interested to like, you can tell that was redubbed. Yeah. Know, maybe, uh, um, I'm interested to know what happened with her experience on there. Why was it so terrible? Uh, Zoe Saldana? Yeah. Write a tell all book. Drop the deets on pirates. Dead men do tell. Oh my god. <laughs> do tell tales. Talk of shit about James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was fucked up. And, uh, He's crying. <laughs> I love Jack. Look at that. Yeah, I love Jack too. Jack the monkey. Jack the monkey. Oh. Um, Thank you, Jack. <laughs> you're welcome. No, she's... Not you, we named the monkey, Jack. You'll, you'll hear that in five minutes. I don't know why. Are we, like, previewing what's, a, what's to come? Yes. <sighs> I wonder where they actually filmed this. Probably it looks beautiful. I don't know, it looks... I mean, it might have been in a lot, but it looks real. Um, I think it wasn't until Pirates 3 where they created their first, like, ent like entire boats. It was like Pirates 2. Boats. Pirates 2 and 3 were filmed at the could exact it, same time. Could it be, potentially, that these are miniatures? I no. don't know. No. I think these are actual ships because they have an actual Black Pearl and yeah. Flying Dutchman. I know, but for like the tight shots like that. Is oh, like... I don't know. But I think one thing Hollywood's really done a great job of is um, pirate pirate ships and pirate battles. Like really, they like that. It just looks so real. Right. It's great. And again, people just fly off of. <laughs> Stop blurring all of my ship. I love how, like, that's what he's concerned of all the things. About. I wonder if they touched like on that. the initial fascination of Jack with the Black Pearl. You know, what was it? In the fifth movie? I don't know, just ever. No, I think it's pretty clear in this movie what his fascination is. No, but and like, where did he come across it? All right. Yeah. Oh, he knows the story. Kyle, go ahead, tell him. Oh, okay, right. okay. And it has to do with Cutler Beckett too. Yeah, which ties into the oh, other. Oh wait, movies. wait, wait, was that? Okay, no, wait. I think I know some of it. But go ahead. Okay, because that was the ship that he was given for. Uh, it was original. It was originally called the Wicked Wench. Oh, okay, right? okay. It was originally called the Wicked Wench. Which and Kyle and Jack was a privateer. Which, wait, wait, wait. Which historically. Is uh, it, that's the name of the actual ship in the in the in the ride? Really? Oh, you know that oh, ship that Barbosa's okay. on right now? Yeah. That's called the Wicked Wench. Oh, okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, he was given a ship by Beckett called the uh, called the Wicked Wench, and uh, what happened was is that he was uh, he was a privateer for uh, for Beckett. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, okay, he was getting a lot of money in, you know, and he was like, this is great. He's like, I have one more uh, cargo for you uh, by the end of the quarter. 
And he's like, okay, I'm going to go out and set sail and get the get the cargo. Mm-hmm. And what the cargo was was a full of African uh, slaves. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't stand that. And it was a it was one hundred uh, it was one hundred slaves. That's why uh, you see what Davy Jones says is uh, 100 souls, three days. Oh, is that what it's yeah. a reference right. to? And so he was, and so you had the slaves, and they... Uh, I love how he just stands he, there. He basically <laughs> took all the slaves and uh, and set them free somewhere. Right. And then uh, and then later uh, he gets note that, uh, that uh, some port didn't get shipment, get the shipment. So then he, he searched high and low Beckett for Jack. And then when he found him, he sunk his ship. And uh, because of all the ash and all the smoke and all that stuff, mm-hmm. the ship turned black. And he branded oh. him. And, and then at that point, wasn't he, he going to die or something? And then that's yeah. when he made the deal with... He, uh, no, no, he wasn't on the ship, right? When it, when no, it, no, he, he no, was he brought wasn't. on board and on board... Um, he made him watch the ship go down. Yeah. Oh. And then on the, shi- on the ship, uh, uh, Beckett branded him pirate. Mm-hmm. On, that's why you see the letter P. On his uh, on his arm, but anyway, the whole thing with slaves is it's really interesting because it's an allegory for Jack because he figured out I'm basically a slave as a privateer. That's why he likes piracy because it's freedom. That's what he says in the later on in the movie that what, what it, it's not what a ship is, but what a ship can. Or what, it, what what a uh, ship means right. it means freedom. Um, that whole thing I think is bullshit. But no what it, thing. It, like, yeah, he, it is. It's, the whole how. Thing. That's you're not really, really an you're, gonna, you're gonna compare real slavery to having a job as a as a privateer. Like he, no, I'm not this is the 1600s, know, ladies and gentlemen. Alexis, 1600s. I understand. Um, but, I'm not but yeah, gonna. But anyway, Peter, Peter, come listen, to listen to me. I'm yes. the true pirate connoisseur here. <laughs> oh, but anyway, words. But anyway, yeah. So he uh, he was stranded on like some boat on some sort of dinghy, right? Uh, yeah. And then he was just like you know pouring rain, you know thunderstorm. He was like, <laughs> I want my ship back. You know I don't care what it takes. And so out from uh, out from the corner, the Flying Dutchman approaches, and then Davy Jones says, "You want me to raise your ship back?" And then he's like, "Please, I'll do anything." He's like, "Okay." He raises the pearl back from the depths, mm-hmm. and he's like, "You gotta keep this. Uh, you gotta keep the pearl. You gotta keep the wicked wench for thirteen years." And so then, uh, he wanted to distance, but Jack wanted to distance himself from the past, and thus he named the he renamed his ship the Black Pearl. And back to Peter. I mean, he set the fucking slaves free. Okay, he couldn't stand I slavery. No, so I don't I understand that. I no, I don't have a problem with the, his whole story. I think that's a really cool backstory for everything, and it makes sense. My whole thing is it like being like, oh, it's it's you know. I think you were just adding to shit the, to him being a privateer. That's my interpretation. I whatever. I, that's I a know, shitty interpretation. That, that's my my thing was. Well, my, thank you. You're I'm welcome. Not, I'm not being a strong worded. I'm just saying I, I, I don't buy into that interpretation. But I do think it's it's a really cool backstory for the Pearl and all. But yeah, now you know why the, he has such a fondness of the ship. I'm surprised they didn't touch on that more. There were there were gonna touch onto it in a in a deleted scene of a season of not season three, <laughs> episode of the, of the of the of the what's it called the the third movie. Uh, at World's season. End. Remember when uh, season three? Remember when uh, he was like uh, remember when uh, Beckett and Jack finally met in the third movie? The whole scene was different. Mm-hmm. He was like saying. Uh, the last I remember seeing that ship, it was uh, it was sunk. It was uh, it was sunk on the bottom of the ocean. Oh, okay. And then he was like saying, "We made a deal, Jack. There, you know, you were to, to deliver a, a a shipload of cargo." And then he said, "People aren't cargo, mate." How come they cut that? that I don't know. That, that would have been. And at World's End. Yeah, that would have actually. Tied they cut a lot of scenes. Of the, like that was an, a four-hour movie at best. I know, but. Of all the things to cut. Of all the things yeah. to cut, like that actually ties their story together from the very beginning. They obviously showed this history between them and then yeah. And then he does something stupid. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's now
<laughs> what does it mean? Oh, God. I just love Jack here. It's just... What does it mean what? To be twice removed. I think it means... Like, through marriage? I don't know. Removed? Like, you're shunned out of the... I don't know. I don't know. I think it has to do with, like, marriage. Really? Yeah. Like, divorced? Yeah. Because once you're, like, divorced, you're no longer a part oh, of the family. So, like, especially if you're distant. So, like, they were, they're divorced and then they got back together. Yeah. But uh, divorce is really a thing back then? I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Technicalities here? Technicalities. I love, I love that. <laughs> That's what Verbos is great. I love that character. Go on, bum it. <laughs> I think that's your favorite quote from the entire movie. It's, it's just one of those things. It's, I just, it's fun for me to say. I like, like saying it. That's how I am when you guys question my <laughs> quote unquote agreements or disagreements or whatever. You know? Fake news. You're fake news. No, That's I'm not. I just. Yeah, you know. fake news. Wrong. The dress. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucked up. <laughs> that is funny. more like pirates films just in general Disney or no, in general I have no idea because you see like there's all these um, genres that used to be really popular yeah that kind of went away westerns and then, they, and then they come back yeah but it's like because they did it sometimes because that film that brought it back did it so well no one else wants to compete with it yeah so, uh, I think you sort of saw that with pirates and then you sort of see that with Lord of the Rings with sort of like the sword and sorcery kind of films. And now like Star after, Wars? After that stuff came out, people thought like, oh, no one's going to compete with it. Or no, they thought like, oh, everyone's going to like, th- it's going to be resurgence in that, but no one wanted to compete with it. So It kind of it kind of killed itself yeah. out in the door. Uh, but no, I think Star Wars is different. If anything, I think Star Wars is actually um, getting, we're getting more of that. You know, we got... The three ones I can name off the top of my head, we got uh, Star Wars this year, we got Guardians, and uh, Valerian, and The City of a Thousand Planets. That's very much a sci-fi. Would you put Covenant in there? No. no. It's not fantasy. It's not fantasy. Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. And And there's there's Star Trek Beyond from last year. Star Trek is well. It's not fantasy. It's so not much in fantasy. It. It's science fiction. Yeah, it's more science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, that's what happens when you shoot on location. Right. Are they on the set of Rogue One? Is that Scarif? And that concludes Peter's portion of the audio commentary. You're leaving? Yes, um, I have to go commandeer a ship. Okay. Good luck with that, mate. Meanwhile, I'll keep you company, guys. So. You know, another thing I like about this scene is that uh, un- unmistakably great chemistry between Jack and Elizabeth, especially Johnny and Kira. And this is the point where uh, where Peter uh, was saying, you know, when he was like, like, whoa, how did he uh, get off the ship and this is the technicality, how it was like this whole uh, trade route. Yeah, pretty much. days lying on a beach drinking rum <laughs> she has an idea that was 
eggs and black sheep and really bad eggs to drink up me hotter yo ho yo ho yo ho a pirate's life for I love this song really bad eggs I think this is like the first full blown time you get to hear like clearly the the actual theme park theme song and it's great I love Johnny's portrayal. Especially in this. Like, you kind of get the sense of his character, you know? Like, how it's not basically pirating. It's basically the idea that it's freedom, and having his own ship is that freedom. I love this moment. He genuinely feels like he's going to get lucky tonight. Well, he's a pirate. He's going to have to try to get lucky. Do or do not. There is no try. I really have to know, okay? Do you really reach or do they just come so naturally? They come so naturally. That is scary. Really, really scary. Was it not scary enough? When they were just singing yo ho yo ho and really bad eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Chug that down. Damn. You know what? I would imagine that he's pretty hungover right now. And imagine like dealing with Elizabeth. What right now? <laughs> imagine dealing with Elizabeth's shit hungover. Okay, that. She. You burnt all the food, the shade, the rum. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. He's like, where's my rum? <laughs> All right, mate. Yeah, I'm okay. It's just of all the things, where's my freaking drink? <laughs> oh my god! But I mean, she really fucked up that island. <laughs> this is basically this is basically his vacation spot. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I, I love how like brash he is like he right. thinks he's in the position to make all these negotiations right. but he's like not but I'm but I mean he makes great suggestions he does I mean but that's really part of the charm of Jack Sparrow <laughs> I love that how he's trying to negotiate he's like imagine this I'm your last remaining enemy how can you pass that up Ooh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> a wedding? I love weddings. Drink some around. Oh my god. I love weddings. Drink around. You need to stop. This is, no. my lines. Stop. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. He should have won. Honestly, it's because, dude, like it's you, not just a performance. He really brought this character to life. He created yeah. it. I mean, this character could have easily been boring. Um, no, it could have been a disaster. Yeah, 
and then all and, and then the way that Johnny portrayed it, man, he just like <clears throat> excellent. It could excellent have been Mordecai. Oh. <laughs> Look, there it is. Here we go. I'm telling the story. It's like you and me when we're trying to do explain things. Like who's telling the story? You or me? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Another thing to point out about this movie that's really great is the freaking uh, supporting cast. I mean, this is really an ensemble piece. Oh yeah. I mean. It's like you have Gibbs and uh, Pintel, Rigetti and Marty and Cotton and Anna Maria. Yeah. And they're like supporting characters along with... Um, and then Jeffrey, man. Jeffrey, oh Bur- my he really brings it. And Norrington, obviously. Yeah. I think you know who Jack Davenport is married to in real life? I don't remember. Michelle Gomez. Who is Michelle Gomez? Missy. Doctor Who? Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) You know, you really realize that Jack is a manipulative bitch? You know that, right? Oh, yeah. (laughs) A Little Mermaid, there, call back, or call out, or mention. Come on, they all want to be part of that world. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that smug <laughs> smile he has. He's like, I'm getting what I want. Yep, it's all coming together. Come together. How did I know <laughs> you were going to go there? That? <laughs> He's only half tone. We spill it all. I love how uh, Barbosa throughout the whole thing, he's still carrying that apple. Oh, yeah. Because as soon as that thing breaks, he's going to eat it. Technicalities. <laughs> no, I mean, the timing is impeccable and the dialogue is just rich. I'm yeah. really wondering, like, was that Tana Terrio or was it more... I'm sure Jack had a hand in creating a lot of the... You mean Johnny? The one-liners, yeah. Johnny, yeah. They're the same person. <laughs> Inescapably. <laughs> I love how he slaps his hand. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he's like, I know he's bullshit. Yeah. I'm not listening to what he's saying. I love this. He's a master negotiator, isn't he? Give me Captain.
Look, this is his plan A, mm-hmm. but he always has a plan B. Always. Oh. Right here. Right when he, right when Will, right when Will saw that, he automatically was like, "Okay, I see what you're doing. Yep. You're gonna, you're, you, you have leverage. You have your leverage now." The Sokovia Accords. See what you do. You see that reaction? That's what it feels like. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Gents, take a walk. Not to the the boats. (laughs) Well, they're fucked. This is an amazing sequence. Yes. And the The music. music, yeah, the music, and then just, oh my gosh. The way it looks, I mean, look at the water yeah. and look at everything else. What? Are they, they're serving as a distraction, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth what is he trying to imply there? What? Even a good decision made for the wrong reasons can be a bad decision. Because he know, I think he kind of knows what what her uh, angle was. What is. she wants. Yeah. yeah. I like that. At least he knows his daughter. Elizabeth, when we get back, you must walk the <laughs> walk of atonement. <laughs> no. Ding, ding, no. ding, ding. Shame. Ding, 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 ding. You know he's a Bond villain, too? Jonathan Price? Apparently. Yeah. He uh, he was in uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh. With uh, Pierce Brosnan. I think they just cut his throat. Also, he's in a really <laughs> good... Okay. That's great. Um... <laughs> Also, Jonathan Price was uh, one of the leads in a uh, in a popular uh, what's it called Broadway musical called uh, Miss Saigon. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they effed up. Yeah. There's, there was Lumiere. Buzzing up. 
turns out you're a hard mix. Here we go. This is a great sequence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. With the music going on, yeah. the freak, the sound. Honestly, the music makes it. Yeah. It really does. It really adds, it really throws back to like the Errol Flynn, Robin Hood esque movies, the swashbuckling stuff. Here they'll be monsters. pretty sad yeah the curse is pretty sad it is not being able to taste anything you know being thirsty yeah but not dying of thirst oh my god that's <laughs> oh get for monkeying around I know I know I know I know it's okay you get no credit for that Mackenzie does rock the petticoats, though. <laughs> well, did it really just occur to them now that their ship is being under attack? They couldn't hear that? The gunfire? Hold on. I mean... You can always count on the Marines. Proud of the King's Navy, you all. Even uh, even our Governor Swan has a uh, has his moment to shine. I know, in this. right? It's great. No, you're not gonna get my wig, you bitch. <laughs> Basically, I love that line in uh, Aliens. The Sigourney Weaver is like, "Get away from her, you bitch!" At the that's a end. classic line. I love that line. I think that's in AFI's uh, be, yeah. 100 uh, top 100 film quotes. I like that look he gives. Like really, you know I'm not gonna die. Well, I guess I have to kill you now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the look of complete confusion. Oh my god. Let's leave it to Jack. Look at it like this. Shit eating grin right there. Really? 
I love his laugh. I know, right? And again, I mean, we, we've been crediting it. We've been crediting uh, Johnny for Jack, but but Jeffrey, Jeffrey Rush, yes, Jeffrey Rush really brought something. With and Lomosa. you can just tell he just loves that character. Yeah, and, and it's just a classic pirate, and he does his own thing with it. And that laugh is just—it's one of the most memorable laughs from a villain I can ah, remember. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, it's not easy creating one of those things. I mean, Mark Hamill's Joker is... That's another iconic laugh. Right. Like, when you hear that laugh, you know it's Mark Hamill's. What about the Emperor's laugh? (laughs) (laughs) Good. 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 I've been waiting a long time for this, my little green Oh, he just got caught... That's too bad. It's a flesh wound. No. That was a Monty Python uh, Holy Grail reference. Oh my god. Boys and girls. Yeah, the score. Give it a Klaus, man. Yeah. He definitely made one of the most unique ones. Oh yeah. Definitely on the top 100, right? Film scores of all time? Yeah. Probably top fifty. I mean, yeah, it definitely adds to the, the to all of this going. It's really important because I don't know if I would be looking the way. If, I mean, I don't know if I would be feeling the same way if it wasn't for that score. Yeah. Like it gets you amped up. It's important. You're gonna need it for Calypso later. <laughs> like they're like might as well yeah <laughs> try wearing a corset she gets one of the most cheesiest hero lines yeah <laughs> That, I mean, that that's a, that's what people were wondering the whole movie. Jack's on Jack's side. That's really the yeah. answer. To just stand there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wow, you guys are fucked. <laughs> I like this. Oh, well, they're dead, right? Oh. Ow.
all this time he's been wanting to know uh, have that feeling not just like taste or anything but feeling and the first feeling that he has is, is death is death yeah That's you. Yeah. I like how there's blood on a sword. Because mm-hmm. mostly in Disney movies, they just stab them what? and there's no blood. You can't get away from that here. They're swords. No, but like in like other Disney movies, like uh, like Chronicles of Narnia and all that mm. stuff, where's the blood? I never saw those movies. Really? No. You know what? No. What? I'm sorry. Continue. I think the first one is really good. Like a really How many solid were there? Movie. There's like three out. Really? The third one was easily the weakest. The second one was good. I, I didn't like it as, as much as the first one. Till Swinton, she's the main villain. And then uh, you have uh, uh, James McAvoy. He's in there. Really? Uh huh. You know. I love Jack. He's he'll ruin the moment. I know that we we've been. T- I know he always does. We, we talk about Jack and Barbosa, but I really have to stress this, and we haven't really talked about it enough. Is I really do think that the relationship between Will and, and Elizabeth really works. I think they do it well enough because, I mean. In a blockbuster, whether it be Marvel or things, it, it, the relationship between the two leads is always lackluster. However, however Jack and, I mean, uh, not uh, Jack, Will and Elizabeth's uh, uh, chemistry and dynamic is ruined by Jack and Jack himself's dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that really, really... It creates a new scenario, which yeah. makes it enjoyable and different. And then, like... By the way, this movie has been amazing so far, and then we still have that last sequence we're about to get into right now. Yeah. Like, you thought the movie was over. Yeah, well. It's like, this is this is just depressing. I mean, Jack, like, really saved the day. And now he's going to get hanged for it? Pirate's life. Captain Jack Sparrow. Get it right. You're going to freaking... Hang me by the neck until then. You can't even say my name right. I really don't understand what it was that people enjoyed a hanging. I don't know what it was about watching somebody's life be taken out by hanging that enjoyed that that made people feel happy or, or better That's about like themselves. Fox News. You said it, not me. I will say it. I was going to say like the South, but you know, to each their own. They, they get wigs too. Those are military officials. Yeah. No, but right now, like this is whatever, but I think they really go overboard in the fourth movie where it begins with, Daddy, let's go see The Hanging. And I'm like... That's just common day. Yeah, but it's That's just... just a, a common day. It's disgusting how people found that pleasurable. Well, I, lo- I love the part we missed it. Um, but it was like... When they were like listing off the crimes that Jack did. Right. Um, he's like uh, impersonating clergymen. Right, right. And then he like looks and he's like, I remember that. Right, right. Having fun memories. How many times can she do that? That's why in the second in the right. second movie she tries Nobody doing that. Her. Nobody blinks an eye. <laughs> See, like, I love how, especially in the first three movies, there are just things that happen again and again. It's like poetry; it rhymes. Yeah. I wonder who said that. Some cuck. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's wow. He's George Lucas. 
You know, he started some fighting words right he there. He made my favorite movie. Of course, I you know, of course, I have some love for the man. Again, we're yep. going back to it. The theme. Yep. The it's re- honestly, it's like, it's really a character in the film itself. And I know people like, in general, they, they, they like to overlook these movies. But this score is a character in this film. And it does... It does. I'm not going to put it on the same level, but I think that the Williams Star Wars scores really elevate that film the same way that that this score is elevating this film. (laughs) He's like, give me credit, bitch. <laughs> he know he knows what's close by. <laughs> I love I love Jonathan Price's reaction right. to his breath. I love how he does. I was waiting for you. Elizabeth. It would have never worked out between us. It's incredible. Honestly. Holy. <laughs> like the only good words to say he has. Nice hat. I hope he gets to say it fully again in the fifth one. interesting the governor's thoughts on piracy it's really I wouldn't say it's inconsistent it's just interesting though he seems to say piracy itself can be the right course like what is the meaning behind that I guess in this particular situation I mean Jack is the least of our concerns Yeah, he did help us so of course later that will come to bite them in the ass well is that really Jack's fault, or is it, you know, who, I mean, there's a bigger dick out there in the world than the pirates. The government! <laughs> he's a blacksmith. No. No, he's, he's a pirate. He's a pirate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> amazing score. I don't know how many times we have to say it, but it's an amazing score. And look at the shot. So many great shots in this movie too. Oh, like like what Peter said earlier, the 
Gore Verbinski is an amazing visual Ryan. director. <laughs> I love how he caresses it and everyone's just watching and he's just like, yeah. oh shit, people are watching me. <laughs> Who's gonna fuck his ship? Wait, wait, I, this is a great sequence. great what what's really so masterful about this is this film stands completely on its own but there are so many instances where they're really just planting seeds for the next couple of films and yeah. even that last scene was him all right part one of my plan i got the pearl bag now i gotta get away from jones and get yeah. out of this stupid deal so because you automatically you know what he would because the thing about the about the second one the first thing you see him doing he's already developing a plan because right, right. when he went into that prison I mean we don't know how he got into the prison but first we know of what all. he's looking for is but the we key. know is the key or a drawing of a key a drawing of a key because <laughs> you need that <laughs> well first you got to know what the key looks like because right. there's some, like a billion bloody keys out there sure so uh, so yeah he he's constantly like thinking you know. Mm -hmm. He's not just like, okay, I, I get to kick back and relax. I got the pearl. No, his his journey has just begun. Um, it is, uh, to me, when I see this movie, I think, wow, that was, that was really good. It's an adventure. Yeah, it is really an adventure. It, it really harkens back to, like, the 30s and 40s pirate movies that were, and for the longest time in Hollywood, pirate movies have been extinct. They still have, for, to an extent, honestly. Yeah, I mean, the only pirates movies you see coming out nowadays is the Pirates Disney. of the Caribbean uh, right. pirate movies. You know, so, uh, it, it was really nice seeing, oh, Zoe Saldana. Um, I, I think that uh, this is definitely one for the ages. It's definitely left its uh, mark. On a, on a cinema history. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, especially uh, we're, uh, we're doing these this uh, commentary series on these movies because, I mean, they've lasted so long. Each yeah. of the movies have been successful in their own right, and we're now coming up on the fifth one. Like, this movie came out 2003. It's now 2017, so there's obviously been some longevity. Oh, yeah. But I want to know from you, Kyle, is... Because you saw this in the theater, right? I didn't yeah. see this movie in the theater. Describe what that was like for you. Oh, my God. Like, I saw the trailer... The teaser trailer, and it was just the Skull Island, mm -hmm. and it just said the font Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm like, this is really interesting. I right. want to see this. And I'm sure I, at that point you were well accustomed with Disney, the yeah, Disney attraction. Yeah, of course. I was. I. I was. I. I'm pretty sure. Wait. Okay. So. Two thousand three. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Uh. Two thousand one. Two. Three. Yeah. I've already been introduced to Star Wars and all that stuff. So. Um. When uh, when this movie came out, uh, I, I I was like, hey hey dad dad dad, let's go watch this pirates movie. Right. He's like, all right, let me see who's in this. Uh, Johnny Depp, because uh, you know really, uh, he wasn't like, he was like the go to actor. You know, I mean, because uh, at the time he was known as like a blockbuster uh, blockbuster bomb. You know, because yeah. because he was like in movies like From Hell and The Astronaut's Wife and all that, all those other movies, and they tanked at the box office. Right. So everybody thought that Johnny Depp was blockbuster poison. Right. And so he was like, "Eh," but then uh, it's like, I don't know. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take you to it because you because you want to see it. But you he know. did not want to see it at all. Yeah. And then he came out of the movie. I remember he. I was like, "Dad, wasn't that movie great?" And then uh, and then he was like. Yeah, it was really good. 
<laughs> you know, and your dad's like, really picky with yeah, yeah, and he was like completely flabbergasted. Well, he liked he liked Beauty and the Beast, the new one. <laughs> a lot of people like that movie. To be fair. It's a divisive movie. Big news, <laughs> um, but he he came out of the movie really enjoying it, and I and I really enjoyed it too. And I we developed my love. I automatically drew to Jack. Yeah, of course. caught me that it's you. It is me. He <laughs> is me. Um, the way he acts, the way he is, his mannerisms, the way he's like thinking, you know, he he's very much me. No, you it's know. just that he's a captivating presence from the minute he steps on screen to the last shot. Yeah, and who knew that the combination of uh, of Keith Richards and Pepe Le Pew would be this monster of a character? I yeah. mean, you think of characters, you know, in past that have really captivated an audience. Right. Automatically, in that top ten, you automatically think of Johnny Depp's portrayal think about as the Jack Pirates, Sparrow. The, the Pirates franchise is, yeah. they have great actors and they have great supporting characters, but I think this is one a situation in which... This, the character is bigger than the franchise, mm-hmm. and that is Captain Jack Sparrow, which is one of the yeah. best characters ever created, and one of the most uh, like, honestly, iconic. Yeah, he's iconic. iconic. You know that that that's the thing to take away from this is that he's an iconic character, right? Uh, and, and not just that. I mean, a lot of good things. I mean, we. I mean, it, the the lone hero in this is got to be Jeffrey Rush's performance oh my as Barbosa. Goodness, yes. Yeah. I mean, he, when you if see anything, him, he should have been supporting actor nominated alongside yeah. Johnny Depp. And he was amazing at this. He like the laugh that he does, the over the topness, like when he was like right. saying "agreed." When he did that face, you know, and. and He's got to be one he, of the best villains of this century. Yeah, he sheds uh, as just being a generic uh, pirate villain from being something else completely. Right. Also, another thing, uh, Klaus Badelt's uh, score yeah. was amazing. I mean, yeah, uh, Hans Zimmer helped uh, helped make the make the filler uh, bits, but all in all, this is Klaus's baby, you know, and and, and it's still being used today. Yeah. You hear it in the parks. It's a huge part of the rides now. It's a huge part of the trailers yeah. that we're and seeing. You know what? A lot of people were like before this were contemplating. You know, should we ever touch one of our rides in uh, in Disneyland? And after this movie, after uh, after uh, three years have gone by, they were like, you know what? It's time to bring in the ride, the movie elements from yeah. to the ride, and well, that I mean, was the first yeah. time you really saw, like a huge potential, uh, exponential change in the in the rides. Especially, uh, well, I mean, the, especially the, the classic attractions that were operated and designed by Walt Disney himself. Yeah. But more to the point is, it was uh, the last one to be personally touched by Disney. Exactly. But look at the monumental success. I know we've discussed this, but the monumental success this movie has had, an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor for Johnny Depp is huge. Yeah. This movie crushed at the box office or many were think it was going to be a box office bomb and uh-huh. really it, it's just like it. what it spawned was Disney saying okay you know what not only do we want sequels we want to do a trilogy and it, we're going to film them back to back on top of yeah. them saying we're going to go back to our classic attraction and add Jack Sparrow and Captain Barbosa Ooh, because that's actually pretty cool what? Ramen Dijuati oh he was okay wow who is uh, the composer for Game, uh, Game of, Thrones. of Thrones and Westworld and a whole bunch of others. Well, he, but the first Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, but more to, to what I was saying is Disney had such confidence in what they had here. Not only It made they, $700 million at the box they, office. Yeah. They, 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 greenlit, they greenlit the two sequels, but and they also included Jack and Captain in the classic Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, the original attraction. When you walk into that queue and you're going inside and you see the boats... You see Jack and and and, and Barbosa, Barbosa in the Hall of Pirates, right? The infamous Hall of Pirates, and then they're featured prominently in the attraction. Yeah, like they're there. Forever. And not only that, Jack Sparrow himself is a meet and greet character. Yeah. So I, knowing that how big of an impact it was onto the thing, I think it really um, kickstarted uh, the live action. Uh, department, department at, yeah. at Disney because so far the the things that were big right now was the animation because before that you had like freaking Mulan you had a uh, Lion King uh, Little Mermaid all that stuff with the within that time frame of the right. 90s decade and then now you get into the 2000s where yeah you, that you, was a very interesting decade because as Kyle just mentioned is this is 2003 right the 2000s in particular were a very turbulent time because Disney animation and, was 
flailing, if not yeah. flatlining, in several instances. But the live action films with the Pirates movies, Haunted Mansion, National Treasure, there were several of them that were actually, I mean, what was it? Remember the Titans? Remember the Titans. There were a lot of good live action films coming out of Disney in that decade. Yeah. I think The Blind Side even came out. I'm not even sure if that's Disney. Who that's knows? not Disney. <laughs> Fake <laughs> <was> news. Like, <laughs> but anywho. Also, uh, here's a, also here's a end credit sequence. Oh, oh my goodness. I had forgotten about these. A post end credits sequence. Not a like, lot of movies had them. No, but it's like a lot. You know that Marvel Studios gets the, the credit for like normalizing them, but yeah. it's like which was the first movie to actually do this? Because I know that, that all the pirates have post end credit sequences. Because I remember uh, uh, my mom and my and my stepdad went to the theaters as a mm-hmm. date to go watch this movie because I told them oh, about it. Oh, really? And then and then they came back and they said, "Did you know that there was something at the end of the credits?" I'm like this. No, no. really. What was it? And then it was like uh, it was like Jack the Monkey stole one of the coins, and then I'm like this. Ooh. Does that mean the curse is back on? You know, and I and then I thought I was like, oh, you're speculating what was gonna happen with the sequel. You know, and then they announced that the sequel was gonna, and going back to Chronicles of Narnia. I did not know that another because it was beyond another the time good of Disney Internet. franchise live action. Yeah. Um, I watched the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Right. And then when The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe came out, um, I was sitting there and, I, you know, you watched the, the previews before. I heard Elizabeth singing, yo, ho, yo, ho. And one of the things, I'm like this, wait, what? What? You're a mocked man, Jack Sparrow. And then the teaser trailer to Dead Man's Chest oh, came out. Oh, and remember, at that time... We didn't got internet. I mean, we had internet, but we didn't get trailers like we do right yeah. now. So you had to go to the theaters and so, experience it for the first time. And then I saw that. I'm like this. What? I was completely flipping out. I completely forgot about the rest of the movie. Right, I know. All I was thinking about was, you know what? I would rather be watching Pirates right now. Because it was such an amazing trailer. Because it was trailer. such an amazing trailer. And my thoughts of the first one, and it really brought back. And then, right. and then lo and behold, I, uh, shortly after the, the second movie came out, it was announced that the third one is going to come out. So I was like, yes, I'm in Candyland right now. So, uh, yeah, final thoughts on the movie. Honestly, it's, uh, it's a personal favorite. I yeah. think, uh, give it a couple years. It'll be, it's, I think it's a classic. I think it's a classic too. Um, so yeah, that was our uh, audio commentary of Pirates of the Caribbean: Curse of the Black Pearl. We got I three am, more going. I am your host, Kyle Lira. <laughs> the, with me is Alexis Soto. Bye, everybody. And then, uh, thank God he's not here to sign us off. I know, right? Seriously, he would have said, "I am Alexis." Bye. <laughs>